Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning about how to add shading to a drawing of a face. Now I've already made a drawing of a face here, so this video is not really taking you through that process step by step. I have other videos related to drawing uh, the face, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. I will link to a playlist uh, and other videos uh, in the description. Uh, of this video, but uh, what I'm going to do now is zoom in on the eyes. I'm going to add some details to the eyebrows and to the eyes themselves. And then we're going to, uh, you know, I'll do that all in time lapse, and then I'm going to slow down and do some real time uh, shading as I show where I would add shading in these sort of blank spaces uh, between the eyes uh, and the eyebrows. All right, so I'm probably going to be adding more uh, detail, finalizing these uh, eyes later on. But for now, I really want to get on to the main part of this video, which is to talk about adding shading. Now, note that I am keeping my pencil very low to the page at a very low angle, which exposes more of the graphite um, than when you hold it at a high angle. Then you get more like a, of a linear style. When you hold it real low to the page like this, you end up getting more of a shading style and um, I'm adding quite a lot of shading right here uh, near the bridge of the nose. I'd say where this sort of area beneath the eyebrows um, reaches uh, toward the bridge of the nose. We tend to get a lot of shadow here. Now I gotta say um, this is based on a sort of conventional lighting scheme, the light coming a little bit from above uh, the face. Uh, when you change the lighting scheme, of course, the location of the shading also changes. So uh, you can't really regard this as, you know, you should always shade every face like this. You know, uh, this is just one sort of typical uh, shading scheme um, that, that you see under what I would say sort of average lighting conditions. But what's interesting is that uh, most of the darkness tends to sort of pool up right in this area over here. Uh, in this case to the left, uh, the upper left area of the eye. And then this region where um, the, um, the, the flesh between the eyelid and the eyebrow sort of folds up, I think it kind of tends to curve a little in most people uh, in the structure of most faces so that we get some shading here uh, below but you don't darken all of this area up here. It's like some light is able to reach that area much more than uh, over here. And um, some people, depending on the structure of your face, you're going to get a little bit of shading even here, just near, um, you know, between the two eyebrows, above the nose itself. You might get a little bit of shading here. And what I'm probably going to do is just time lapse through the repetition of, of shading this eye in the same way. So let's consider this just the, you know, the, the real time of one of the eyes, and then we'll do the whole rest of the other one. Uh, time lapse. Now another area where you're going to see some shading is below the eye and I'm slowing down here because I have to really kind of carefully add. My approach is to sort of do slow small circular motions of the tip of the pencil to gradually build up a little bit of shade right here and again depending on the person some people have uh, eyes uh, that uh, have quite a, a substantial structure down here and cast a fairly substantial uh, shadow. So, uh, so much of this sort of depends on lighting conditions, the actual face, the facial structure of the person uh, that you're drawing. But um, I thought it might be interesting to at least have one video that focuses completely on shading rather than on all that other stuff of, uh, of actually drawing the face. Now I've come over here and in this case she's got hair that is kind of casting uh, a bit of a, a shadow and that becomes a slightly different thing. Um, if her hair were pulled back from her face I don't think you'd see nearly so much shading uh, over here. So I guess that probably does that for the real time uh, of this part of shading in the eyes. Um, you might get a little shade on the actual eyeball itself, uh, generally toward the top of it. Um, when you get into a really detailed drawing of the human face, that's where you'll start to get into details like this with shadow, shadows falling upon the actual eyeball. But let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to do the rest of this other eye in time lapse. You may see, see me add a little more shading here. Then we'll come back to talk about shading in the nose.
All right, so we've got the good basics of sh some shading going on here, and uh, as I draw the nose, we may refine this area at the bridge of the nose a little more. Uh, but I think it's time for me to shift focus down to the nose and uh, continue adding shading. Okay, so I'm going to jump in here at the bottom, uh, where I think is the primary uh, area of the shading, and uh, start adding some here at the base of the nose. Uh, now, uh, again, depending on the lighting situation, you're going to get uh, drastically different uh, types of shading down here. And if, the, if there's quite a lot of light sort of splashing onto the face from straight ahead, sometimes the nose almost um, vanishes a little in terms of um, how much its form is revealed by way of shading. I've decided, though, to uh, at least give you some uh, fair amount of structure of the nose revealed. And um, if I imagine this light as coming primarily from one side or the other, I'm going to think of it as coming a little more from the left, just a touch more from the left. And that means that uh, this tip of the nose gets a little more heavily shaded uh, over here on the right-hand side. Now, as we move uh, up toward... Um, the bridge of the nose, this is where the shading really needs to get quite subtle, and and uh, I'm going to try to do this real time, but uh, I think it really does require an awful lot of gradual, sort of incremental buildup uh, of shading to do this properly. So toward the end, I may have to resort to a little bit of time lapse, lest I put everyone to sleep by way of this very... But you can see, even in this uh, amount of time, I've, I've managed to build up something there. Sometimes people will put just a little hint of shade above the tip of the nose to emphasize uh, the, the structure there. And then down here, this is where I'm always very careful not to um, darken in the nostrils too much, and also not to delineate the sort of edge of the nostril too much because it does tend to very quickly look um, sort of pig-nosed or just calling too much attention and I think very often we're we're trying to limit the amount of you know we don't want the person looking at the drawing to have their eye pulled too much uh, toward the nose you don't want to call too much attention to it but you can see me adding a fair amount of shading here uh, below the tip of the nose, and, and because I said the light is coming a little more um, from the left-hand side, uh, building things up a bit more uh, over here on the right. Um, but that doesn't mean that I can't add any shading at all over here on the left. I just keep it a little more subtle. And uh, in terms of uh, the amount of shading that goes beneath the nose, um, again, depending on the lighting situation, I think you're inevitably going to see a fair amount here right below the tip of the nose. In a conventional sort of lighting situation, but I wouldn't um, go into too much uh, shading over here on the, below the nostrils. I don't think there's any need for enormous amounts of shading down there. So, yeah, let me uh, give myself a little bit of time lapse. You know I love my time lapse. <laughs> Let old man time lapse come in here to rescue me, and I'm going to add, um, you know, to sort of finish off my shading uh, throughout this whole area of the nose. All right, well, I think that just about does it for the area of the nose. It's time to shift focus down to the mouth, and I think we'll be able to uh, still keep the nose in frame as we sort of join these two areas together. All right, now one of the first things I'm going to do is sort of lighten up this uh, line uh, delineating the upper lip so as to allow myself to really define it mainly by the shading rather than by some harsh line. And what's interesting to me as I study photos and different things uh, uh, relating to drawing the face, this upper lip is not uniform in terms of its um, shade. Uh, Certainly, if it's being lit a, a bit from above, um, I'm putting in a sort of a uniform base layer of a, of a light uh, shade. But what happens uh, a lot of the time is that um, the darkness sort of um, forms over here towards the left, the lower left and lower right hand side. And I think it maybe has something to do with the curvature of the lip that as it curves, 
uh, the upper section is get, catches a little bit of light from above and doesn't doesn't need to be so deeply shaded. Uh, now different people have uh, different levels of texture uh, in their upper lips and I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit of line work here to sort of represent those wrinkles that sometimes uh, form on the lips. Just a little bit of a added detail but primarily I wanted to focus on how uh, dark it gets down here at the edges as we reach to the sort of corner uh, corners of the lips and this area also sort of you want to build up um, a fair amount of darkness there it tends to be an area where the the light just cannot reach and um, in terms of the area between the upper lip and the nose uh, I find it best to sort of leave that area alone and not attempt to um, put in too much detail uh, of course, we all know that there's uh, there's quite a defined structure there uh, in some people. That as you try to render that in line work or shading, sort of like I was saying with the nostrils, or maybe the bridge of the nose, that you end up calling a little too much attention to it. I find, and so I'm just going to leave that sort of to the imagination, almost. And now we get down to the area of the uh, lower lip, and what's interesting to me is that. Um, the shadow tends to form quite deeply right below, immediately below the lower lip. Um, again, depending on the structure of the person's face. And then it, the shading, the shadow dissipates uh, quite quickly. But certainly in this area right below, depending on the lighting situation, you can get quite a deep uh, area of shadow. And then for the lip itself, I'm going to go ahead and put a sort of a base layer. I like this area on the left and the right to be um, defined mainly by way of color and not by line or deep shade. Um, so you're seeing me again uh, going, keeping the pencil very low at a low angle to the page and trying to get this um, area of the lower lip indicated in as subtle a way as I can. Now what happens uh, in some lighting situations is there is a bit of shadow here in the upper area of the lower lip. I think I need to sort of uh, decide what we're doing here with the interior of the mouth. I'm going to go ahead and do some line work there real quick. Um, I suppose we might see a hint of the teeth, but again I don't want to call too much attention to the teeth, so I may even erase that back away a little bit. Very often it's only these two front teeth that become quite clear and you get a little bit of sha uh, shadow. In fact, yeah, I don't like seeing any, even the as little of a line as there was, to me that's almost too much. <laughs> I don't like to, to see the individual lines of the teeth so much. Very, indeed, many artists will just make a solid white area there. Um, it's a very common uh, illustration technique. But uh, again, yeah, the, the, uh, this is not a solid area of shade. It, uh, it's sort of, you get some darkness down here at the base. Like I said, it's sort of a strip of darkness up here. And sometimes maybe this, uh, the upper lip is casting a little bit of a shadow upon the lower lip, so you get a little bit of shading in there. But like I said, this area right here on the left and the right, I don't like to darken it in too much. But I might go, because of the lighting situation being a little coming from the left, I might delineate things a little bit more over here uh, on this one side. In fact, get a little bit of shading all the way around there. And one thing uh, that becomes very helpful, I think, is to start focusing on this whole area outside of the lip. Um, this sort of pouty area where um, the muscles can sort of pull down on the mouth and again different uh, people have a different structure here. Some men and women have a quite pronounced um, area here to the left and right, sort of lower area surrounding the lips. Uh, if you just leave that completely blank, um, you're maybe selling yourself short a little bit because this uh, adding in shading in this whole area can really um, add a whole new feeling of structure of how the face sort of supports uh, the lips in this area. 
I'm not going to do too much shading uh, down here as we go around the chin. But I think we can get some shading over here that sort of echoes this area. Again, we've got a sort of a left-right disparity here where the, the right-hand side is more heavily shadowed than the uh, left-hand side. Did I get that right? Right-hand side, left-hand side? One of the sides is <laughs> more deeply shaded, but that doesn't mean that there's, that there's no shading at all over here. And that's why I'm going back in and sort of deepening the shade a bit. And I believe that is going to bring us pretty close to the end of this video. One thing I want to do is sort of refocus so that you can see the entire face as I bring out my trusty black Prismacolor. Oh, simple black colored pencil that will allow me to deepen uh, the dark areas darker still. Uh, my little technique, I call it the two pencil method of combining a simple graphite pencil. Uh, like this one, a Dixon Ticonderoga, with a black colored pencil, and it really helps. I think you'll see. I'm going to do this all in time lapse, but you're going to see me adding um, final shading and uh, darkening things in to uh, finish off the drawing, and then I'll be back with a few final words. <music> All right, well, you can see I put an awful lot of time in there at the end, all in time lapse, uh, building up the shading here and there throughout the drawing. I'd say patience is the key, really, uh, with shading. Don't rush it. Take your time. Build these things up little by little uh, until you've got uh, a good balance of lights and darks throughout your drawing. I did add a little bit of white gouache, an opaque uh, uh, paint there to uh, get highlights into the eyes and a little bit on the lips and nose. Um, but otherwise, I think it's time for me to say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like The Realism Challenge, my book on hyper-realistic illustrations. We've also got The Two-Pencil Method that I mentioned uh, in this video, and indeed I used, it, used that method to do this drawing. And of course, there's always Mastering Manga. I really cannot say thank you enough to those of you who choose to support me by getting any of those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you liked it. And I'll be back with another one real soon. <laughs>